Hello, thank you for joining us today at Miniature Wargaming Labs. Now we've started getting some questions about using terrain for Marvel Crisis Protocol in 28mm. Now here at the labs, Brian and my wife Erin uh, use and play Marvel Crisis Protocol. I spend a lot more time in the 28mm. And so in some of our videos, you've seen a mix of the terrain from MCP and some of the models that I have together. So we've actually gotten some questions about how well does do 28 millimeter models fit in with Marvel Crisis Protocol terrain? Are they seamless? Because some of the issues we have is when you're trying to save money, especially on stuff that you might not consider essential like terrain, you would like a one size fits all terrain solution. And so we decided, all right, let's make a video where we talk about that and we'll do some size comparisons. Now, the thing I wanna start off is this is just a sampling of some of the terrain my wife has for Marvel Crisis Protocol. And these are the Daily Bugle and the Daily Grind buildings. Now something that she found she can do is she taught herself Tinkercad, she used the 3D printer, and with a simple window swap and a little sign, maybe some other signage to put on the building, these buildings are just basic shells and you can put whatever you want and form it into whatever type of business you want. So we could turn this into a police substation. We've got a donut shop right here. You could turn it into you know, a store in a favela in Brazil, something on the streets of Shanghai in the downtown area, whatever you wanna do because it's just a building with a door, uh, two doors. And then you can just change the signs and windows to reflect whatever language or time period that you'd like. That's a real advantage to some of this terrain. But let's talk about how the miniatures work into it. So now 28 millimeter games like Infinity or um, Spectre Operations, one size level is 2.5 to three inches tall. So this is one floor right here. This building to the corner here is two and a half inches tall. So even though Marvel Crisis Protocol isn't set for 28 millimeter, the buildings already conform to the sizing standard for 28 millimeter, that works. Now, something you'll notice is when you use terrain, the thing that's gonna set it is how well do you cheat your eye against the objects of the terrain? So for example, in this building, it'd be the door, um, where the height of the doorknob is, where the height of the door is, to the top of the uh, head of your model, or also where the counter is. Now, let's take, for example, Iron Man from Marvel Crisis Protocol. Now what you find is Iron Man is probably the one guy who's actually standing up normally, he's not leaping around, standing on broken down boulders, so he's a good size comparison, we'll go with that. So you can see from the counter height of where he fits on there, the counter is the right height, so he looks uh, like he could walk up there and order a cup of coffee legitimately. However, he is kind of large when compared to the height of the door there and where the doorknob is. Now what really a problem here is where the trash can that comes in the set comes up to the his knee so that's more of a waste basket um, but the dumpsters fine and some of the other signage is fine but when you're playing the game and you paint it upright and moving around it cheats the eye you won't even notice that but that's something we found when they designed the train terrain for Marvel Crisis Protocol is that the way they size the objects um, on the outside of the building does tend to fool you to think that, well, it's good enough, the proper size, especially if you're not inspecting it too closely. So let's start off with one of the games I like. We'll take some models from Spectre Operations, 28 millimeter scale, true scale. Now, when you look at these figures, the, the counter is kind of high on them. Um, so it doesn't look like they'd step up there and order, uh, <laughs> maybe if they're a toddler, they can peek over the counter uh, look in. However, the trash cans are perfect. Uh, the dumpsters, really good. They might be a little wide. The door fits. Um, the cars are actually perfect. Uh, so if you take an example of one of the models next to a car door, that works out just great. Uh, if you take Iron Man, Iron Man's not going to be comfortable in a cross-country trip in that car, but my bodyguards would be. So I look at this and say, this could cheat the eye and would work great for Spectre Operations. Now that's 28 millimeter true scale. Now not every game company works in that scale. Let's try heroic scale. So we'll try something from Anvil Industry. Anvil Industry does work well in Spectre Operations. You can blend into some of their models. They are a bit beefier on there, 
but you can see you have some of the uh, same things. The door is the right height. Um, these do seem like the counters even more inappropriate, like they're peeking over with their heads uh, to the top there. Um, the cash register appears to be a little too large if you're using like the daily grind. Um, but you know, the door works, the trash cans work. So if you're just focusing on the models and on the road that they're sitting on, uh, it works well. The car also works well with this size model. Um, the, the biggest issue would probably be, you know, if they wanted to cross the street, the button seems a little kind of high up, but that stuff, um, there are worse terrains out there. So it seems to work for the heroic scale, but you know, a lot of people um, might not have these models, but you might be familiar with Warhammer. So actually the best model size-wise that just fits in every aspect is a Primaris Space Marine. He can walk up to the counter, the door's the right height, the trash cans might be a little small, but Primaris Marines are big. So he actually works pretty well. And we'll just do one of the Tempestus Scion guard type models there. 28 millimeter heroic, uh, GW tends to push that boundary closer to 32 millimeter. He works fine there. So now one of the things I wanted to point out is when I put these models up here, the way I decided to base them is on the standard thicker uh, 25 millimeter bases from GW. Now let's take something from bolt action, 28 millimeter true scale. They use a thinner base and a lot of the Spectre operations, they recommend using a penny. That's going to drop the level a lot and that will not trick your eye at all. So I've got my Falsham Jaeger. Here, try to go up and order a donut, and he just fits under the counter. So um, if you want to use this terrain, focus on the idea of using the bases. That really boosts up the height of the model without making uh, the model look uh, disproportionate to everything else. But I mean, this is something MCP models have with like the trash can, because Iron Man's on a base. If you figure the trash can's down, that's what creates that height difference that you see there, what makes the trash can look so small is because he's on his base. But the base allow, the base on these models, a little bit thicker, allow you to blend your eye in, um, blend the model with you tricking your eye into fitting into this terrain where the smaller, thinner bases from uh, Warlord Miniatures wouldn't do that. So I hope this has been a valuable comparison of how this terrain will fit. As we found in no scale, is this the ideal terrain, but it actually is a very flexible terrain and ideal for being blended across several sky, uh, size scales. Could you use it for 25 millimeter? Maybe, but why would you play 25 millimeter? 28 millimeter and up to MCP, this is, I think, the way you'd wanna go. Uh, save yourself a lot of time and money. Uh, I prefer painting plastic to MDF, uh, and I believe the uh, NYC terrain pack, and I'm. Uh, is a goodbye, and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what other models uh, Atomic Games comes out with. So I hope you enjoyed this episode at Miniature Wargaming Labs. Thank you very much.